Happy Wednesday, everybody, and welcome into the Graham Luck and MacLean podcast. Welcome in on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Sirius XM, wherever you are listening to us. And we have another great guest today. As you know, it's Wednesday. It's Student Athlete Day. It's current ACC Player Day. It's bring and your student athlete to work day. <laughs> yes, it is. It is. It's um, bring. It's Job Shadow Day. So they're going to come yeah. check out the podcast and see if they like it. But, Mac, I'm excited for this guest. This is actually the second FSU player we've had on. And I see you're wearing your FSU shirt. If you're on YouTube, you can see this. Let's go, baby. Come on. You you showed me up a bit because when JT came on, he was like, oh, man, nice shirt. And I was just like, JT, I got to be honest, man. I don't own a single piece of Florida State here. (laughs) My apologies. You know, you you haven't been down there outside of, you know, probably playing and draining three. So why would you? Why would you have a – Florida State football gear. We'll try to we'll try to get Derek to, to send you something. He he needs to hook you up. But yeah. I'll tell you a little story on this. I can't remember if I said it in the interview with, with Jordan or not. You know, too many hits to the head here. But so we go down there and we're we're at the the summer tour and we're walking around and Amari Gaynor walks in. Who, if you don't know who that is, I don't know why, but he is like this Adonis looking guy, just like a freak <laughs> linebacker, good looking cat. He walks in, he's strutting his stuff, and he has this shirt on. I was like, yo, that is an awesome Florida State shirt because it's a little retro. It's kind of it's the cool. retro. It's cool. I like it. Yeah, it's a good one. I have a little Amelia spit up on there. Watch out. Oh. Um, we'll watch that. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I was like, dang, I need one of those shirts. And Derek was just kind of taking notes. You know, I didn't know that. And mm. uh, we're going to leave. He, like, throws it to me as we're leaving. I'm just like, oh, my gosh. Derek Satterfield, the OG. Appreciate Shout out support. to him. How Thank many teams have given you gear at this point? I'm trying to think who didn't, because that's probably a much shorter list. Mm. We, we can just call them out now. Yeah. No, I'm, who I'm hasn't to... hooked Mac up with the gear? I'm trying to think. I have to go there. It can't just be whatever. I True. think everywhere we've gone, people have they've given us stuff. It's been really good. It's well, been nice. this needs to – my women's basketball peeps need to step it I up because I need some. I'm going I to... will say this, too. I shamelessly beg You do. Stuff. You do. <laughs> you have no shame when it comes to gear, and I yeah. respect it. Yeah, yeah. Because I just like I'm are. the gear guy. Yeah. You know who you are, and you embrace it. That, that's I'm going right. to four campuses in November, so let's see if I can it's a big opportunity. get some gear. It's a big opportunity. The, the anyway. difference is I'll be getting jackets, Mac. That's the difference. <laughs> I don't need jackets. I <laughs> won't wear it. don't need it. I'm good with T-shirts. Um, let me tell you about our little guest here, uh, because he's a big deal. Jordan Travis, super excited to have him coming on. He's playing out of his mind at the quarterback position, just doing really, really well, KG. It's, we talk about this a little bit, but just seeing how he's progressing and how he's pushing the ball downfield, finding his guys, the rhythm is there. And, of course, recently he's really been doing it with his feet. Um, with so much fun conversation with Jordan Travis. Let's jump into this. We'll have a little fun on the back. JT, hey, welcome into the podcast, my man. Really appreciate you joining us today. Listen, you guys are coming off a of bye week. You got some time to yourself. I got to know, what the heck did you do? I was a guy that always went home. Is that what you did? Did you have some fun? Did you go see some teammates? What did you do? Um, a couple of my teammates, we went down to Orlando. Um, going home, is it's a, it's a long hike. So, <laughs> yeah, I just, I just wanted to get out of Tallahassee for a few, clear my mind, um, refresh, and get, get ready to get back to work. Um, I see my family every weekend. They're at every game, home or away, so I'm blessed with that. So I, I needed a break from them for a few, too. So I, it was good to get away for sure. <laughs> That's awesome, Jordan. I did see on your Instagram, I don't know if you did this over the bye week or not, but I saw that you like to fish. You're a little bit of, a, of an angler, as they say. My husband likes to fish, so I know some of the terms. Um, what, what, do you, what do you like about fishing? Um, I feel like it's, it, it gets me away from everything. It, once again, it like, kind of clears my mind. When I'm out there, I, I'm relaxed. I have my little country music going. I'm not really thinking about much. I feel like that's important when you play football. You have to find a way to get your mind off of things. It can't be football, 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 but at the end of the day, we're people. Um, I think that's what uh, people, players get caught up in a lot. It's always thinking about football. Um, sitting, you sit in your house all day, it's you're thinking about Coach Marvell's voice. I hear Coach Marvell's voice all day long. So just getting out <laughs> dreaming of the water. about it. You're dreaming about it. <laughs> yeah, it's crazy. But yeah, it's just it's just a good refresher. Um, this man. Uh, who, who's on your country playlist? That's what I need to know. I have a little bit of everybody. Um, I got some old some old guys. I got Luke Holmes. I got Luke oh, Bryan, Morgan Wallen. You know all the okay. basic guys. Golly, uh, <laughs> Go I, I thought I saw some some custom 
fishing rods made. Was that the case? I, I saw Big Gibbons might have had one. Uh, he actually made me that. Um, he's been oh, wow. About it for a little while. Is there? So that's what he said he wants to do after football a little bit, to make like rods. So it was it was pretty cool for sure. Wow, that that's amazing. Well, if I freeze out, I'm sorry. I'm I'm out in the uh, the country of Sumter right now, and and in the the wastelands out here. Um, I, I wanted to ask you about that bye week even more because it's always interesting, you know, to see when this falls for a team. And I think it came at a, at a good time for you guys. Where, where is this team mentally and and having that break where you could kind of check out, you know, for for a couple of days? Um, I think I think as a football team, we've been through so much. There's been so many ups and downs throughout the past couple of years, especially for the guys that have been here for a while. Um, I think that this break was was very helpful helpful for us after coming off those three losses. I mean, we played three great teams, but at the end of the day, we were we were really close in every single game. So I think it was good just to get get off get off for a few days. Coach Norvell gave us a few days off more than usual. Um, it was just good to get, and then we came back today. I mean, that's that's the main thing, just seeing the players come back today. Um, the way. Everyone had energy. It was really special to see. I mean, I had a lot of energy today. I was ready to go. So just seeing all the guys just with smiles on their face, happy to be back on the field. I think we're ready to go. You mentioned kind of the ups and downs of the last few years here at Florida State for you. And this year, yeah, even though you've, you've lost the last three in a, in a very close fashion to three really good teams, you still were ranked at, at one point in the year, I think one, the best probably four and three team in the country. What have you seen that's been different this year from your last couple of years at Florida State? Why do you think this team has been able to have this success? I would just say the mindset. Um, this offseason, we worked really hard. Coach Storms pushed us really hard. Coach Norvell, the rest of the coaches pushed us really hard um, to be the best every single day. Um, I think that's what the guys focus on a lot now is just waking up every single day and just trying to be your best. Um, not just the best on the field, um, the best person you can be, the best student you could be. And I feel like all – all the guys on the team have been doing a great job with that. Um, but, yeah, we have a lot of confidence. You can just see the guys flying around, trusting what the coaches tell us. Um, it all comes down to trust and believing in your coaches. Um, mm. And I think we're doing a great job with that. I, I love to hear that, man, because I think that's so important. And when it's mutually, you know, I- exclusive as well. And, you know, speaking of Coach Norvell, when we were down hanging out with you guys this summer, I was so impressed with him as a coach, man. Just the energy, the passion. He loves football and he loves you guys. And I, I don't think that's something that you know, a lot of me, media members get to see that curtain kind of pulled back. That has to be awesome to have a guy like that leading your football team. Yeah, we're blessed. Um, I love him a lot. Um, I love him kind of like my second dad. Um, I've never had a coach that cares for me this much. Um, he coaches me really hard at the end of the day, um, but he loves me a lot. Um, he cares about how I'm doing after the game, whether I play good or bad. I think that's re- really special. Um, I think, obviously – not a lot of people see him. Um, they see a, some guy that tries to act all tough all the time. But he, he's, he's a sensitive guy, and he cares about us a lot. I, I like how you said that because I think a lot of football coaches have to act like that, especially with the media and, and, and in a game. But the ones that seem to have the most success are the ones that definitely care about their players off the field. And sure. for you, Jordan, I want to talk more about this off season because – this year, Florida State, um, I think, sent a message to you in some way by not trying to go to the portal and bring anyone else in. This was your team. That was pretty clear. What did you work on in the offseason specifically to get you to the point now where you're playing really, really good football? I'll say that the main thing I worked on was my mindset and my – how I – I would say how I led this team, um, how I lead this team every single day. Um, I worked on – just getting the guys around me to trust me and to believe in me. Um, but I had to be the same the same person every single day, no matter what goes on back home or if I got a bad grade on the test. Um, I can't let that affect me. I have to come out every single day with a smile on my face. I think I, I did a great job, and I'm doing a great job with it still. Um, you know, every day is not going to be perfect. Um, but you always have to keep a smile on your face no matter what's going around. Um, so I feel like I did a great job with that. And then with my physical – I would say, I mean, I gained a lot of weight. I was 208 coming into the season, which I feel like showed a lot to this team that I care a lot. And then just a little fundamentals with throwing the ball, and just trying to bring my game together. Um, we did a lot of PRPs, which is player ran practices during the summer. Um, I feel like that helped a lot too. Well, you talk about putting your game together. I mean, you're doing that. It's so fun to watch the ownership of this offense, the passes that you're making, the, the tight windows that you're throwing in, not just – scheme where, where, you know, guys are running wide open. I mean, you're doing it 
and it's it's Thank been you. a lot of fun to watch. And I, I think part of that, you know, JT has, has been this coaching staff opening the playbook for you. I, I remember last year, kind of when it was transitional, and and you became the guy. It was a lot of all right. Let, let's do a screen left. Let's do a slant here. Let, you know, try to you know kind of protect him almost. And now it's like, no, nah, man, th- th- he's got the whole thing at his disposal. He can push the ball downfield, and you've been able to take advantage of that. What was that process like to build the trust? You know, not only with your your players, your your teammates, but the coaching staff as well. I would just say the work, the work. Yeah, uh, Coach Norvell always says confidence comes from the work, and I feel like. I came every single day just ready to work. Um, I showed that I want it really bad. Um, you can trust me. I used to tell Coach Norvell, Coach Tokars, you can trust me. Like I can do this. I, I've been able to do this for a little while now. I feel like my confidence is growing every single day. There's still so much room for improvement, um, and I'm ready to keep elevating my game. I mean, there's still so much. I watch the film. There's throws I should have made or check down I should have took. Um, but, yeah, I'm just getting better every single day, and that's the main focus for me. You know who else has gotten better, or at least the the group has improved, because I know some guys are new, is your wide receiver core. I mean, these guys are really bringing it. We had Micah Pittman on earlier, and he was great to talk to. He talked about his relationship with you. Tell us more about your bond with Micah, but also with big Johnny Wilson, Pokey, all those guys uh, with your wide receiver group. Yeah, those those are all like my brothers. Um, they're, all, they're all really special people. Obviously, on the field, you see what they can do, but they're really special people, which is big for me. I always talk about the person before the player. Um, I feel like it translates a lot to the field. Um, they care a lot about the game. They care a lot about each other. I think it's big. But, yeah, Micah and Johnny, they came in here. Um, Deuce came in here. We got Winston. All these guys, they gel so well together. Um, they're so close. Um, but, yeah, they're all just great people, and we're so blessed to have them. Did you guys do, like, how did that relationship, I guess, build? Was there extra practice, extra throwing sessions, film room? Because, I mean, quarterback-receiver relationship is very important. And, and to just have guys not come in off the street but come into this team that are, you know, brand new, you know, what went into those relationships that, that I knew had to be pretty intentional? Yeah. Um, I would say, like, right off the bat, I was really close with all those guys. I mean, I hang out with Micah and Johnny probably every single day. From the day that they got here i feel like we just we're, we're like we gel really well but yeah we were out on the practice field a lot almost i would say like three to four times a week um just with the little player ran practices just trying to get timing down yeah and trust because it all comes down to trust especially with receivers and quarterbacks no no question about it all right how about this run game man because <laughs> listen you guys have an absolute three-headed monster with ward benson tolafili and, and it just feels like when those guys are healthy they get going it's it's almost unstoppable. So how, I guess, do do y'all manage who gets the ball, who gets to go out there when, and then just seeing them all seemingly have that great relationship where it's just next man up. I'm going to give the carries that I get. I'm going to go as hard as I can. You go in and do your job, and we'll keep, we'll keep going. Yeah, I think that's the most special thing about all of them. You never see anyone having their head down. Um, there might be a game Trey Sean might get 20 carries. Trey might get three. LT might get two. But you never hear – anyone complaining. Um, you always see them happy for one another, which is so awesome. Honestly, I like Coach Norvell controls that. I control that. I just look to my right or left and I see who's in. I'm, I'm comfortable. <laughs> I'm like, let's go to get, get the ball in their hands. But yeah, we're so blessed to have them. Um, we also have Rodney Hill. We got CJ. We got a couple guys back there that are also great players that are growing every single day um, and watching. I thought those three guys lead very well. So I think they're doing a great job for sure. Well, even without Ward, you guys ran for 6.1 yards per carry against Clemson, which was, was really impressive. When did you realize, and I know, of course, with your ability to run the ball, that's always going to be a factor. When did you realize maybe throughout the offseason that, okay, yeah, we have some great wide receivers, as we talked about, but we're going to run the ball this year, and that's going to be part of a big part of our identity. When did all that come together? Um, just how I see the O-line come to work. It, it starts mm. up front. I mean, Mac loves to hear that. Yeah, <laughs> it starts up front at the end of the day, um, and especially with this offensive line. They've got a lot of hate over the past couple of years. Um, mm. No matter what, they come to work every single day. Those are those are my guys. I love them so much. Um, but it all starts up front. The running backs will tell you that. Um, I thought they just came to work this summer. Um, <laughs> it's been different than every other year. So I'm I'm so happy for them. But, yeah, everything starts in the trenches for sure. 
Jordan, how you, you bring up kind of the hate that maybe the O-line's gotten and, and perhaps uh, you got you at times and your teammates at times over the years, over the last couple of years with some of the losses. How do you deal with that? How, how did you kind of overcome that and maybe try to ignore some of it? Um, yeah, um, I have a great supporting cast. Um, my family is the best. They're the best. I mean, they support me through it all. Um, I've learned a lot from my brother um, playing baseball at Florida State and then in the pros and watching all the stuff. Yeah, I used to type in his name on Twitter and I used to see all the hate he used to get. And I used to, <laughs> and him. And he used to tell me, just let it happen. I mean, they they couldn't be in your shoes. Um, right. So, yeah, I got, a lot, I got a lot closer to God. Um, mm. I would say, what was it? Probably two years ago or last year, I got really close to God. And I put everything in his hands. Um, I just have to come to work every single day. Um, control what I can control. And just keep a smile on my face the entire time. That's awesome, man. We, we, we love to hear that. And you see the, the benefits of it, you know, when, when you tap into that higher power and, and can use him as such a, you know, just this undeniable resource and, and support system as well as that great family that you have, which is so important. Before we jump into GT, I, I want to talk a little defense right here with you because, man, you got some headhunters in that secondary. When I look at Jamie, I look at Keem, uh, just, just some really good linebacker play. You know, Bethune has really stepped up, a guy that, you know, I don't think was on anybody's list, but he surely will be by the end of the season here. What do you see from those guys each and every day that has allowed you, you know, to really have a solid defense uh, each and every Saturday? Yeah, uh, we always talk about iron sharp, sharpens iron. I mean, that's that's a hard defense to face in practice every single day. So they're all special. I mean, the linebackers that we have, I mean, they're pretty pretty insane. We got Kalen, um, Tatum, Amari. We got a couple guys that are just out there that are just dogs. Um, obviously, our DBs are really, really good, um, really good, and they're improving every single day. They push me every single day, talk a little trash during practice. <laughs> Wait, DBs going. talk trash? Are you kidding? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> too much, too much. Um, our D-line, I mean, that's – they're insane. I mean, they're insane. Just just the effort that they show on every single play. You see a ball way over there, and they're on the opposite side of the field. You see them sprinting to the ball no matter what. They might be a little tired after, but they're they're getting everything <laughs> they have all the time. So, yeah, we're, 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 we have a special defense for sure. Has anybody on that side of the ball um, surprised you or, or maybe stepped up that – not that not that you didn't expect. I know you see these guys every day. We, of course, don't. But is there anybody that just, man, you're like, we needed that guy to do it, and he, and he is? Uh, I'm, my guy's uh, Akeem Dent. Uh, I went to middle school and high school with him, so I've seen no him. Way. Bro. No way. <laughs> so it's, it's, it's kind of crazy. Um, I saw him, I mean, he was – the top of the top in high school. Um, he got in his head a little bit throughout the beginning of his career in college. And just seeing him play how he's playing is, is so awesome to see. Just, he works so hard. Um, so, yeah, I'm, I'm super proud of him for sure. Come on, man. I, I love it. Okay, well, let's jump into Georgia Tech. Um, you know, just super kind of off the top, you know, before we get you out of here, the, the Jackets have – you know, kind of had an up and down season. There's been inconsistencies, but I think you know the best part about their team is you know been the defense, and those guys have really shined. You know, at, at particular times of this season, they've got an awesome linebacker, Ace Ely, that just flies all around the field. What kind of things have you seen from those guys? You know, they will present a bit of a challenge for you on Saturday. Yeah, they're 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 big athletic guys. Um, they're all fast. Um, uh, it's, it's it's a good team. It's a good football team. I watch them on film. I've been watching them a lot. I mean, they they fly around, which is really cool to see. I, I love it. Uh, it's the type of game I I love. A bunch of guys that just play hard. Um, but yeah, we just been focusing on ourselves this week. But yeah, we're I'm, I'm looking forward to playing them. They're a great team for sure. Well, you talk about focusing on you. Give us a couple keys if you can. If FSU is gonna beat Georgia Tech, improve to five and three, what what are y'all gonna have to do on Saturday? Um. Just focus. Um, focus is the main thing for us. No focus penalties. We don't need any of that. Um, just do your job. Um, that's that's what it comes down to. We need every guy to do his job. If we all do our job, I mean, the play's going to be successful or close to being successful. Um, that's what we've been focusing on. Just there's no there's no need to hit a guy late. Um, mm. Get him get him the next play. Um, just little things like that. That's what this football team needs to continue to grow on. To grow on, that's like the most, I would say that's like the most important thing for us, for sure. There you go. Worry about yourself. I love it, man. I love it. Well, thank you for your time. We're excited to watch you guys. 
Good luck on Saturday, my man. Yes, sir. Thank you. I appreciate y'all for having me. Man, that that was so fun, KG. And really, I, I loved hearing all those things Jordan was saying and kind of hearing his mindset about mental health and as a leader mm. and the things that he was you know, really working on. I, I think, you know, the quarterback position, you can't discuss that enough and, and just how important that is and – we might be seeing that in real time here in a couple of weeks with DJ Uyunglele and, and how he handles, you know, the situation at hand where he was benched and now he's going to go and have to face the, the an Irish team in a couple of weeks up in South Bend. But another thing that I thought was really cool about that interview, when I kind of asked him, okay, defensively, you know, who, who's caught your attention? Who's, who's really shined this year? And uh, he says Akeem Dent. And, and what mm-hmm. was so cool, it was kind of a – full circle moment for me because, oh, again, I, I keep reflecting back at my time hanging out with those guys at FSU. I sat down with Keem and we were going over some plays and, and mm-hmm. just highlighting things that he had done. And, you know, he and I were just talking and, man, somehow it came up just asking about culture and asking about buy-in. And, and I, I think what I said is what's the biggest difference? Like why will this team, and this was off camera, but why will this team, you know, not start off 0-4? Like h- how are we going to totally change what we did, and, and of course, we see what happened. They start 4-0 yeah. and rank in the top 25. And he said, you know what's the biggest difference, and I'm the, the, the biggest spokesman for this, is guys are really starting to buy in. And I'm on my fourth year here. I was ranked you know, high. I could have went anywhere in the country, and I just fought these guys. Everything they said, I did the opposite. And I was going back and forth and not listening to the coaches, think they didn't want the best thing for me. And he said it was like a light just switched for him, where he said – this is my last ride. I, I've got to trust these guys. I've got to do what they're saying. And he said he had the best off season, obviously having a massive season right now. And so that was really cool to, to not only, you know, kind of hear that from him, but also the biggest leader on the team, your quarterback saying, mm-hmm. yeah, I see this each and every day. So big shout out to Keem, man, just to, to kind of see that and, and see how well he's playing this year. That was really cool for me, KG. That's some great insight there, Mac. And I think part of it, too, that led to the buy-in is probably how they finished last year. Things started to click, and they were yes, playing a lot absolutely. better, and they're thinking, okay, if we do buy-in, how special could next year be? And, right. you know, this is a team we talked about with Jordan Travis, who, by the way, is super impressive. I, I didn't yeah. expect anything less, but really impressive guy. And I do believe this is the best 4-3 and three team in the country. Now, Me too. Some FSU fans might say, all right, fine, how many four and three teams are there, whatever. But you played the three best teams in the league, and you had heartbreaking losses to all three. Now, with the rest of this schedule, you have an, a serious opportunity to finish really strong, to finish possibly nine and three. Right. I, I think that would be massive. Even eight I think and that's four. On the table. I think no, that's I on agree. The table. I completely agree with how bad Miami looks, with how bad Florida is. And those are the yes. two teams that you were really worried about. I mean, they still have Syracuse as well, but. It is very possible. And Jordan Travis today, or when he talked with us and coming off a bye week, sounded very confident. Not that I expected him to sound unconfident, but (laughs) I think this should be very much on the radar for FSU, a nine and three, even eight and four. No, no question about it. And and I think what, what's so interesting, you know, when you, you just, there, there's these little historical marks, you know, throughout a team's timeline. And, And I think back to, you know, Coach Bowden and how great of a coach he was and the things that he was able to do. And Coach Rick was on, you know, a handful of those staffs and the amazing run that they had in the 90s and early 2000s. And I stumbled upon this quote, KG, where he said, where Bobby Bowden said, first, you lose big when you're trying to transform the program, when you're trying to to do things that, you know, haven't been done in a while. So first you, you lose big and then you lose close. Then you win close. And then you win big. I think Florida State is right in the middle of that, where mm. they're losing some really tight games, some big time games, and then now the next step is okay. We got to win those. So you know, there's a couple more opportunities on this schedule where they can still do that. But this team's going the right way, and we haven't been able to say that in quite some time about Florida State. So I'm all in with it. I, I think that Coach Norvell is more than capable. Yeah, what he's been able to do. It was really cool for me again to go down there spend some time with him, see him interact with the guys. There, there's very few coaches that do the things that he does. And it, some of it is very Dabo-ish. Some of it just his own twist on, on you know, the, the game and the things that he does. So I'm, I'm with it. I'm rolling with the, with the Knowles here. And we've heard Jordan Travis and Micah Pittman. If you missed our interview with Micah Pitt, Pittman, go check that out. Both were really, really complimentary of Norvell. 
And Mac, what you're saying where you lose close and win close, I think to your point, they're in the middle of both of those because they have won close this year. They beat LSU 24 to 23 and they beat Louisville by four when Jordan Travis was knocked out of that game. So they also have had some close wins. And I think you're seeing them kind of try to get over that hump. If I'm just playing win game, just purely looking at the rest of their schedule, I think they beat Georgia Tech this weekend. We're going to talk about that game. I think they beat Miami. I think they lose at Syracuse. I think they beat Louisiana and they beat Florida State. Or they beat Florida, sorry. So that's eight and four. And that would be a huge step in the right direction. Absolutely. I mean, if we would have started the season and asked, you know, Florida State fans, what what do you think? And we actually should go back and and see what we did win game for Mm. these guys preseason, see what we thought there. The people would be over the moon. Well, the schedule looked so difficult preseason. That was the other number one in the ACC. Yeah, it was the hardest schedule in the ACC. I I agree, KG. Let's let's look at this game a little bit because these guys are playing Georgia Tech. It's at noon, ACC Network at Florida State. Florida State is a big time favorite in this one. Twenty four points. I think the reason because of a lot of points. Jeff Sims maybe not available for Mm -hmm. Georgia Tech there at the quarterback position. You know, what, what's interesting for me is, you know, I, I want to see the mindset of Florida State, KG. I, I want to see, after losing three straight games, how do we bounce back? Do, do we, you know, just re- respond unbelievably and play really high-caliber football? We, we had a break in there as well. So it's not like you just jump right back, you know, kind of in the seat and, and play a game that next week. There's been some time, and it sounded like those guys maybe got a little extra free time than maybe a normal bye year. Um, so I'm really interested to see the mindset of these guys when they play. Mm-hmm. I think when you look at this game, my first thought, and you and I have kind of been debating this offline, is <laughs> the spread is 24. And even though Big I believe number. FSU is going to win this game and win it pretty handily, 24 points is still a lot of points. Now, think about the Boston College game, a somewhat similar opponent, and FSU beat them by 24 plus. They blew them out. That wasn't even close. And that game was in Tallahassee. So, And this game yep. is as well. So I think that's a factor. A reason why I think this game is going to be a blowout is because, and I mentioned this with Jordan Travis, Florida State still rushed for 6.1 yards per carry against Clemson without Ward. And mm-hmm. you're doing that against Clemson. Mm-hmm. So that part's really impressive. They have such depth at the running back position. And then you flip it over on the other side. And bad news for Georgia Tech fans, Georgia Tech ranks 13th out of 14 ACC teams in rush defense, allowing 177 yards per game. So I don't think this shapes up well. And I also think from a Georgia Tech perspective, right now we're seeing that Jeff Sims, I just saw this on Twitter today, he sprained his foot. So it's a different injury than the Duke game. He is day-to-day per Brent Key. Just think about this locker room, Mac, if they don't have Jeff Sims. I, I worry about their approach to this game as well. And their rush defense. I also very much worry about that. I, I, I just think of what, what are you going to do? I mean, what the heck can you do? I, I saw the, you know, the performance from, you know, Gibson there and I don't know. It wasn't inspiring. Well, he's um, not Jeff so, Sims, you know, I mean, Jeff Sims is a very close. talented player. Yeah. No, no question about it. So maybe the, the deal is you've had some time and, and you can prepare and maybe have a game plan that, you know, Zach feels comfortable with, but that's a tall task going against that, you know, defensive line mm-hmm. of FSU, that secondary, those linebackers, flying around all over the place. So it, it's going to be interesting. I, I think more so it's going to be kind of a confidence builder for, you know, FSU, for those guys to get back, to feel good, to feel getting a win again, and probably in a really dominant fashion. So I, I think that's going to be the deal there. The, the kind of shining light, if you will, for this Georgia Tech team is Ace Ely at the linebacker position. Mm-hmm. I mean, that guy is a freakazoid, flies around, not afraid to hit you right at the line of scrimmage. It's just a really nice looking linebacker that is putting together a really great season, KG. I, I think that, you know, he has proven that he's one of the best linebackers in the conference. And I think he's squarely, you know, in the lead, you know, for ACC defensive player of the year. I think it's wow. a toss for that position right now. It's just there's a lot of there's a handful of guys playing really good football. I think Ace, just when you look at the film, you look at the stats, production wise, there's there's not a lot of people that can kind of match what he's done in regards to sacks. Tackles for loss, tackles in space, getting his hand on the football, creating turnovers. He's he's doing it all for Georgia mm-hmm. Tech, but it, it it he might be the only one. Him, and Charlie <laughs> Thomas. <laughs> yeah, well, and it's it's tough to win ACC Defensive Player of the Year on a team that maybe it's goes bad. under five hundred. Right. We'll see. Yeah. We'll break down this game even more on Friday, so make sure you come back. We'll give you our final thoughts on the spread. I am I am not prepared at this time to give you a thought on the 24-point spread. Well, because, it sounds like you're leaning Georgia Tech. That's what it sounds well, like. Well, Jeff Sims is day-to-day, you know? 
Tomorrow's you need more a new day. You need more time. I understand. We could hear on Friday that he's playing, and then I think it's it's a little different. But I still expect <laughs> FSU to win this game. Before we get out of here, I know this has been an FSU centric episode, but we did want to give a, a couple thoughts here on Georgia Tech's coaching vacancy. Now, yeah. with Brent Key, he's done a great job. I think the only way to get that interim tag removed is if he did something crazy, like went undefeated, or if he beats Georgia, or just something right. absurd. And of course, he hasn't gone undefeated. The name that I like, Mac, and I think oh. I might surprise you with this a little bit. But y'all think she's going to surprise me? What now I wonder if you have the same name. Oh, the name that I like is Bill O'Brien. <laughs> Why are you laughing at me? <laughs> is that who you have? Why, why did you think it would surprise me? Because that's I think that's my number one target. Um, number two, of course, that's who you would say. Of course, we would be I thinking the same guy. You, I thought you could never forgive Bill O'Brien for his Houston Texans offenses. but I, I don't think it's a good idea, but I think it's going to happen. <laughs> so I think it is a good idea that. because Bill O'Brien is obviously a better college coach than he is an NFL coach. Sure, no And question. he was at Georgia Tech for a long time. He yep. started as a GA there. He ended as an offensive coordinator from 1995 to 2002. And Jay Bat, the new... Um, one-lettered man, the athletic director at Georgia Tech, was just at Alabama. I think it makes a lot of sense. And I think, you know, he's. it, it seems he's evolved a little bit offensively. Now, if you have Bryce Young, you're going to evolve. But <laughs> Easy to evolve. <laughs> can Jeff Sims do a little bit of what Bryce Young does? I, I think it – and he's not Bryce Young. Don't hear me what I'm not saying. I think it makes a lot of sense. Yeah. No, I, I do too. I think that's that should be the number one target. I absolutely do. It, it's going to be a fascinating thing to see who they go after, because I think it's, I always get so caught up on, do you want a guy who's been a head coach? Do you want a really hot coordinator? Do you want a guy Mm -hmm. who's a G5 lower level head coach that's had a lot of success? And so it's so interesting. And at a place like Georgia Tech, I think for sure you have to go an offensive guy. Like I think that's just kind of common sense right now with the way the world is shaped, the way the game is shaped. I and, agree. You, know, you just had a really good defensive coordinator, defensive minded head coach, you know, come over and, and it wasn't super successful. So I'm with you. B.O.B. My number one. B.O.B. Jamie Chadwell from Coastal Carolina. I, I must be like his agent or something because I always throw this guy's name out there for every job. I love that because he runs – this weird triple option RPO attack that's really hard to stop and really fun. So I like that. I saw your face. What? what, what you Here's what I'll say about Jamie. Travel? Here's what I'll say about even though I'm wearing I'm wearing coastal colors. You're wearing coastal of. colors. <laughs> I don't know if Georgia Tech wants to even move back into the same zip code as the option. <laughs> yeah. And then secondly, I don't think I, I like Jamie Chadwell a lot. I don't think he fits at Georgia Tech. Yes, well, Georgia I think Tech. that's part of the problem. Like, you can't get a guy that fits. You I gotta, think Bill O'Brien gotta, fits. I think Bill O'Brien yeah, fits. Maybe. Let's sure. just be honest. I think Jamie Chadwell is too country to coach at Georgia Tech. I'm sorry. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. We got to throw a little mullet brigade <laughs> in sorry. there, okay? All right, how about this one? Here's another one that you might really like. How about Dan Mullen from ESPN bringing no, him down to Atlanta? He won't go to Georgia really? Tech. I'm going over two here. No, Thank I God think I had one I think that you said. If he does leave, he'll go back to the SEC. Who? Who's going to take him? Oh, someone will. Auburn, 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 whoever. But <laughs> All I, right, well, my look, real number one, go ahead, go ahead. If Georgia ahead. Tech can get Dan Mullen, I like it. Okay, okay. So you like the pick, you just don't think he'll do it. Yeah. My last one, and this is this would be a grand slam home run. I know you know where I'm going. If you can get primetime to Atlanta, he will win a national championship. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> okay. <laughs> he'll bring his son over. He'll bring Travis Hunter over. He'll bring everybody. He's going to win a he's natty have it. at Georgia Yeah, Tech. he'll have it locked down. Best believe it. Just saying. Pay I, the man whatever he wants. Give him 10 mil a year. I am not anti-Coach Prime. I think Coach Prime is going to be a D1 head coach. He's I don't think. the ACC, to be I know. Honest. And that would be cool. I don't want. I don't think Georgia Tech's cool enough for Coach Prime. I don't think so either. I and I love so. you, Georgia Tech, but you're just not cool enough. And that's fine. Know who you are and go get B.O.B. <laughs> and try to win eight games again. So basically <laughs> What I'm learning from this exercise is they're not cool enough for primetime. <laughs> they're not country enough for Chad. Correct. They're not good enough for Mullen. So they're perfect boring, for Bill O'Brien. Boring Bill O'Brien. Come on down, baby. Welcome to Atlanta. <laughs> exactly. The, uh, okay. Right. The other All two right. names I just want to throw out there. Oh, you got two more for me. Okay, These two guys go. are both technically retired. Oh. I think Bronco Mendenhall 
could be an mm-hmm. interesting idea here. Pete sure. Thamel reported that he's trying to get back in. I don't know yeah. what that he's means. Going, he's going to Nebraska next. Mm, maybe. But who's your other guy? The other one is Bill Clark, former UAB head coach who retired due to health reasons, but apparently had a back surgery and it went well and he wants to get back in, according to Pete Thamel. Huh. Huh. He endured the UAB situation where they canceled the program and brought it back. Yep. He's a guy who has recruiting connections in the South. He knows how to rebuild literally from scratch. I think he could be a good choice. All right. So of all those choices, are we confident that Bill O'Brien is the best option there? Yeah, I think Bill O'Brien. But I, or the most likely, most likely. What if Nebraska goes it? after him or something? I think that's possible. I could, too. yeah, that definitely could. Man, I can't wait to see it. I, I'm options. happy with where they went with athletic director. I think Jay is, Yeah, he's a home run hire, ACC guy, won a natty. And it at, shows uh, you're committing you know, to football, too. Yeah, North Carolina, but a big fundraiser guy doing it at Alabama. So, We'll see. It's going to be fun. It's going to be exciting. This was an awesome episode. We basically HD. threw out every name possible. So, yeah, I, mean, you I, know? I have a couple more. If we want to keep them going. <laughs> um, but a lot of fun. Big shout out, Derek Satterfield, FSU. Thank you so much. Jordan Travis, for your time, man, was a grand slam. Awesome young man. Really fun to talk with him. But that's it from us. Another episode of Bramlick and Mac Lane. If you don't have SiriusXM, go and get it. Get it in your car. Download the app. We'd love to be with you guys on that channel. But we also... We need you to go to YouTube, subscribe, rate, review. Subscriptions are going crazy, guys. Get after it. Really appreciate you guys there. And also on the uh, the OG Apple podcast, the day ones, if you will. But that's it from us. Appreciate you guys. Until next time, we'll see you all.